All right, okay, so this is predicate logic, or sorry, predicate derivations, video two. Uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, this video is going to cover uh, just our first new inference rule, uh, which is called universal out. So that's going to be the, the thing covered in this video, just universal out. Okay, so let's talk about how this, this rule works. This is a rule that allows us, as you might imagine from the name, to, to figure out how to get rid of a universal quantifier. So suppose you've got a formula with a universal quantifier in it. How do you, um, how do you get rid of that? Here's what the rule says. Uh, this statement of the rule is probably not the most intuitive, but I think we'll see some examples that will hopefully help. So here's what the rule says. It says, if you have something in the form universal v f v, where v is any variable, so that could be x, y, or z, where c is any constant, so a, b, or c, and where f sort of bracket v is any formula, and f bracket c is the same formula that results when constant c is substituted for every occurrence of variable v that is free in f v, we have this rule. That's probably not super intuitive. I'm going to give some examples in a second here, but this is how the rule is stated, and this is what uh, what's listed on your um, rule sheet. Uh, let's look at an example, though. I think that'll make it easier. Here's an example. Suppose we have a formula like this in our proof, in our derivation, universal x, fx. What universal out says you can do is you can take away the universal quantifier and then replace every instance of the variable that was bound by that quantifier with a constant. So in this case, it says any of these are uh, applications of universal out. <clears throat> because in the first case, we took off the universal quantifier and replaced the x with an a. In the second case, the same thing with a b. In the third case, with a c, and so on and so forth. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of, of what's going on. Let's look at some more examples. Suppose we had a formula like this. This says uh, every y bears the r relation to some individual k. Well, again, we can strip off the quantifier and replace the variable that was bound, in this case the y, with a constant. So for instance, we could write this, r a k, r b k, r c k. And the way to think about this is suppose that r is the love relation, and suppose k is some person we call k. Um, this says, well, if you know that everyone, every y, that is, everyone loves k, then you know that Aaron loves k, you know that Betsy loves k, you know that Chris loves k, right, and so on and so forth. What about a formula like this? This says all f's are g's. Well, again, universal out says that you can replace the, sorry, take off the quantifier, in this case, universal z, and then replace all occurrences of z with a constant. But you have to do so uniformly. So for instance, we get things like this. If a is f, then a is g. If b is f, then b is g. We can't sort of replace the first one with an a and the second one with a g. Uh, bleh a B. <laughs> they have to be the same in each application of the rule. Let's look at one that's slightly more complicated. Suppose we have something that says every X bears the R relation to some Y. So maybe everyone loves someone. Again, the rule applies. We take off the universal quantifier and replace the variable that was bound, in this case the X, uh, with any constant we'd like. So we can say there exists a y such that r a y, or there exists a y such that r b y, and so on and so forth. Finally, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Suppose we have a formula like this, and this is actually a hard formula to even express what it says, but it's, it is well formed. It says something like, <clears throat> every x is such that if x is f, then everything is g. Again, don't really worry about what that actually means. Uh, let's just think about what the rule says. The rule says you can strip off the quantifier, that's this quantifier, and replace the x with every variable that was bound by that quantifier. That is, we can get this. If f a, then everything is g. If f b, then everything is g. Why don't we replace this x or this x with the letter a or the letter b? Because those x's are not bound by this quantifier. This x is not itself a variable at all, it's just part of a quantifier. And this x over here is bound by the second quantifier. So in applying universal out, we, we only replace 
the variables that are bound by the quantifier in question. That is, we get something like this. Okay, now that we've seen some examples, hopefully you can see why universal allowed is a valid inference rule. It says, look, if you know that something's true of everybody or everything in your domain, then you know it's true of every single thing when you name it. So if you know that everybody is uh, happy, uh, everything in your domain is happy, then for any named thing in your domain, you know that it's happy. And that's essentially what the universal out inference rule is letting us, letting us do. Let's make a few notes, let's just point out a few notes uh, about the rule, uh, and then in the next video I'll go through some examples. So first thing to note, um, and this has already been sort of emphasized, but I just wanted to make it clear, you can use universal out to write down any letter you'd like. That is, um, as long as it's not a variable, you can replace the variable with any letter whatsoever. The only restriction we have is that we must replace the variable with the same constant in any one application of the rule. Right, we saw that, I'm going to go back a few slides, we saw that back here with this, sorry, not that example, with this example here, uh, we could make the z anything we want, but in any one application, z has to be the same thing, so it's uniformly a or uniformly b. That's really the only restriction we have on universal out. Here's another example of this. Um, sorry, uh, the example is this. Uh, when you take off the universal quantifier here, say you don't want to do universal out, you replace x here and here with anything you like. The only restriction again is that it has to be the same thing in any one application. So this could be, this x could turn into a say, uh, or it could turn into b, but it can't turn into a in one case and b in the second case. That's the only restriction. And note further, if once you did universal out once, you did it again with the universal y, the y itself could be the same name you use for x. That's acceptable. Again, the only restriction is that all of the y's have to be the same and all the x's have to be the same. The second thing to point out is that it really matters what the main connective is of your quantifier, um, whether or not you're allowed to or whether or not, in fact, you must use universal out. If a formula's main connective is the quantifier, the universal quantifier, you have to apply universal out before applying it to any other, sorry, before applying any other rule to that formula. And likewise, if the universal quantifier is not the main connective, you cannot apply universal out. You have to first get rid of the other quantifiers or the other parts of the formula until you get down to a formula that has the universal as the main connective. Okay, let's talk about a few mistaken applications of the rule, and then we'll get to some examples. So suppose we have this formula here. Uh, everything bears the R relation to itself. Both of these things in red are mistakes. Why are they mistakes? Well, in the first one, we didn't replace all of the occurrences of X. We have to replace every occurrence of X. We can't leave any variables with no quantifiers. And in the second application of this rule, we made the first X A and the second X B. We can't do that. We could have them both be A or both be B, but we can't switch in the middle of one application. Here's another mistake, and it's the same mistake we just saw. We replace the first x with a and the second x with b, and that's not permitted. What about these ones? These are both mistakes too. The mistake is that while we have to replace every x that's bound by this variable, this quantifier here, we shouldn't replace the x's that are not bound by that quantifier. And everything down here is not bound by the first quantifier. So while the a, the, changing the x to an a here is okay, you shouldn't do it over here in this part of the formula, nor should you do it over here. What about these? Why are these all mistakes? So the first one does universal out with just the first part of the formula, the second one with just the second part, and the um, third one with both parts. The reason this isn't, a, uh, isn't allowed is because the main, <laughs> the main connective of this formula here is actually not a universal. The main connective is an arrow. And so before you can do any universal out, you'd have to do arrow out first and get one of these pieces by themselves here. So actually you can't apply universal out to this example. What about this one? This is also a mistake. 
Why is it a mistake? Well, it's the same reason as before, actually. The main connective for this formula right here is not the universal, it's in fact the negation. And because of that, you cannot apply universal out. We're going to have to do something else with formulas like this, and in a, in a, in a few later slides, uh, we'll see what that is. Okay, that does it uh, for this uh, introduction to universal out. Like I said, the next video uh, will tackle some of these examples uh, that are on the next two slides.